Hey, what's going on guys? It's Punkovai here for MMOBomb.com and today I'm going to do a first impression gameplay video for World of Warplanes, a 3D action MMO starring World Planes from World War 1 and World War 2 era, published by Wargaming.net, which is the same company behind World of Tanks. Of course, World of Warplanes and World of Tanks sharing names, so of course they're from the same publisher. But we'll spend about 15 or 20 minutes or so checking the game out and of course making our usual comments. If you guys want to learn more about the game, do check them below at MMOBomb.com for the full game profile. So to start off with here, the game does start you with three different planes available, each of them representing the individual nations slash factions available in the game currently. So we have the USSR, uh, we have the Germans, and then we have, of course, the US. Now each of these are biplanes, but as you work your way up, you'll get into different tech trees, which feature different biplanes, or different uh, prop propeller planes, I should say, all the way up into the jets. So you do eventually get jets, they are in different tiers, and as you can see, just like in World of Tanks, you progress to these tiers, unlocking different weapons, weapons and upgrades for your planes as you go along. Now, this is all subject to change. This is the current beta iteration, the closed beta iteration, I should say, of the uh, game. And so all of this is subject to change, and I'm not sure if they're implementing any of the updates provided in World of Tanks 8.0. If you guys remember, I saw my video from yesterday when I talked about World of Tanks. Uh, the tech tree kind of changed. The lookout changed from a top-down view of World of Tanks to a side view. So I'm not really sure if they're going to implement some of those features in World of Warplanes, but I suspect they will do some, seeing as they both use the same kind of interface for the hangar so let's go ahead and jump into a game here I'll just choose the US U team USC I guess and hit uh, battle here America F yeah uh, not really gonna say that but uh, if you guys know that song then props to you team America pretty funny movie but all right if you go by aircraft type here you see there were fighter heavy fighter and attack aircraft and then aircraft by type it goes through 10 tech tiers as well so just like in World of Tanks, different uh, tech tiers of planes and different tech tiers of tanks, in the case of World of Tanks, will fight with each other. Now, how the game actually works is just like in World of Tanks, your objective is to take out the enemy team, meaning that you shoot them down. But also, you can win the game simply by occupying the enemy's base like you can in World of Tanks as well. You can contribute to that by destroying ground stationary targets like AA guns, uh, you know, supply lines, etc. like that, that kind of speed that up or further that process. I should mention that some aircraft actually have rockets as well as uh, bombs that actually aid in that so you can destroy buildings quicker and you can also take out enemies faster if you use the rockets on them. The bombs actually give you a whole different viewpoint allowing you to drop them down on targets. So it makes some fighters better for anti-air to anti-air fighting while other planes excel more in bombing those bomb targets. So depending on your strategy you may want to go with more fighters or you may want to go with more bombers depending on the map who you're facing against and what they're playing. So I can see that really coming into play when you do the competitive side of World of Warplanes because I know just like World of Tanks, that is going to be a huge aspect or a huge thing that they're going to push for. Now, as you can see here, we all start in the middle air. This is all, again, subject to change. I, I suspect there are rather, Wargaming has stated that they might make it to where all the planes take off at once, What I think would have given a little bit more of a cinematic feel. But as you can see down there, we have the, the war-torn little harbor there with various battlefield ships on fire, etc. And we're meeting our enemies here in the air. Now, you'll notice here that uh, the actual interface itself looks somewhat similar to World of Tanks. You know, you can kind of see the mini-map in the bottom right. You can see all the information about my plane in the bottom middle. And it kind of shows you the exact same information, whereas, like, what's my health at? What is the damage looking like as far as am I getting damage from my plane size, etc.? Uh, just like it does in World of Tanks. Now, the actual steering of the planes is quite different. Now, I don't know why I'm not able to get up to this guy. I don't think I'm going fast enough. All right, let's come around here. But in World of Tanks, it was very much a, a slower-paced game, I have to say. But in World of Warplanes, you know, you're constantly flying around. And as you can see here, I'm firing out the target here. Now, what I'm trying to do is I'm using this little green uh, wheel here to kind of lead or steer my plane. And I'm trying to aim my reticule and the little orange reticule on there. Now, what that does is that tells me basically predicts where they're going to be flying so that I can actually get a shot off in the general direction. Now, this guy is doing the wrong thing of flying in the general direction. So I'm just peppering him right now. And hopefully... I'll be able to speed up here and get behind my target. I think someone is shooting at me. Let's see if I can shoot at you. Uh, I'm getting some nice hits on him. I don't know why this guy's just shooting in that general direction. I think he's just flying in one area. Let's see if I can get myself an easy kill, guys. Come on. What's this guy named? FW56 Emini. All right, Emini. You're going to my enemy. All right, so now he's starting to actually fly around here. 
back in the battle. I think it's actually autopiloting him back into the battlefield. He just flew off in one direction. Oh well, easy kill for me. Let's see if I can take him out. So yeah, he, you know if you notice, if I shoot him in different areas, I will actually hit different areas of his plane, and ultimately I will take him out. Now I think this guy may be FK. He just kind of like flew off in the direction. He's not really pulling up. So he's down to 17%. Am I going to be able to take him out? This would be incredibly embarrassing, guys, if he was just AFK and I ended up taking him out like that. Oh, man. Yeah, I think he was AFK and I got taken out. Oh, it was the classic AFK troll bay. He ended up taking me out, guys, unfortunately. But I did get a kill at the very last. So I contributed, but uh, we are currently winning it. And you can kind of spectate other people as they go. That guy flew way too close and ended up crashing his building. One thing I should mention, if you crash your aircraft into another aircraft, you will take each other out. It's pretty much guaranteed. Um, and I think it could be a really good strategy if you're low on health, for example. If you end up crashing into another person, while a dick move it may be, it would end up killing both of you and ultimately killing someone who may be at full health. So that's something to actually consider. Graphically wise, it does look very similar to World of Tanks as far as using the same engine, of course, but the levels are much larger because you do have more airspace to work with here. But just like in World of Tanks, once you're done uh, with the match, you don't have to stay in the match to the completion. You can inspect it if you wish, but I'm going to hit escape and go back to the hangar and return. So my plane will be stuck in there until the end of the match. Uh, but we can take a little bit look at different things real quick, like the exterior. You can change the color of the plane, of course. I'm going to make mine blue. All right, it looked like blue. That's just a highlight color, I guess. And you can hit apply. You can also change the nose color as well. And apply that to change, you know, cosmetically. But let's go ahead and jump into another game here. I'll choose my other aircraft. Now, I should mention my, my major qualm with the game in its current beta state would probably have to be um, my number one one, I should say. It's going to be the, uh, the fact that the steering is really sluggish, in my opinion. Um, unlike, say, Battlefield 2 or 3, uh, other games with jets in them, uh, you don't steer the plane through the nose in World of War planes. Uh, you steer it using kind of like a guide system. I would almost say leading a carrot, you know, a donkey by a carrot on the stick, whereby you say, hey, I want to go this way. So you kind of move your mouse over there and the plane gravitates until it centers around that location. What you end up having is you have instances where you can't get precise enough. Sure, you can make quick turns just by flipping your mouse over and it makes it easier uh, for, you know, an arcadey feel uh, for controls but you don't get the level of precision unless you go with the joystick. Now, you don't want to create a huge level of discrepancy between joystick players and mouse and keyboard players. And what I mean by that is, if you have a team full of joystick players against a team full of mouse and keyboard, and your controls are like they are in the game right now, I would definitely see a issue where the keyboard and mouse players are at a huge disadvantage. They can't get the mouse over people in time, they can't move as fast, they can't maneuver as fast because they're not getting that much response. You can completely navigate with the keyboard and uh, just the keyboard without the mouse and not use the little reticle system, which I'll show you again in the game once we get in. But what you have an issue there is that you can do certain things that you can't quite do uh, with the mouse. So with the mouse, you can kind of be a little bit more precise when it comes to making minute adjustments. Uh, but with the keyboard, you have a little bit more control overall of your plane as far as like doing rolls, etc. And uh, once you get in here, you'll see that I feel a lot of times I'm kind of controlling my plane like a wet noodle or like a ball on an elastic string where whereby I kind of hide hold the ball back and I fling it around in all different corners and you're like I, I'm trying to center around you know that that midpoint and I'm just having such an issue doing that so once this game starts we'll kind of talk about that and I'll kind of show you specifically what I'm talking about I do like the fact that you can simply use your scroll wheel to scroll in and out to change your perspective meaning that you can kind of keep it back here if you need a more overall view so you can see anybody playing that anybody's plane is around you where you are in relation to everybody else and then you can zoom in when you need a little bit more pinpoint uh, precise accuracy with your weapon firing so one thing I'll, I'll show you so once we go in here if I see in this little gray circle here my plane makes minute adjustments to my my aim allowing me to kind of get that better aim but overall it just kind of centers around where my, my circle is now when I move out of the circle, I make you know much wider changes much more quickly. So I'll actually roll around until I face that direction. What I find is when I'm inside the circle, I'm able, not able to make changes fast enough. And when I'm outside of that circle, I'm making changes way too fast. So I'm not able to get a medium. Now of course you can kind of get a medium by coming around here and putting your mouse right there. But what we end up is your planes you know, automatically starts moving around. And all I want my plane to do is kind of gravitate over a little bit here. So I kind of find that I'm, I'm using this wet noodle system. Now that may just be inexperienced, but from what it looks like on the forums, when I was reading the forums, 
a lot of people are not happy with the current system. And hopefully, given the fact that this is closed beta, that guy just like ran into someone else. But hopefully, given the fact that this is closed beta, we will see some improvements to the mouse play. I would just want, that guy's like wavering in the air. I don't know how he's doing that. But I would like just to see a system like Battlefield 2 or 3 where you essentially just pilot it from the nose to the get-go. I think I'm getting some peppers off on that guy, hopefully. Or maybe it was the guy behind me. Let's come around here and come from behind and see if I can get a nice from behind peppering on his butt. All right, let's come around here real quickly. And uh, going to, let's see, we've got to make a name for my guy. So my guy's name, of course, is Spunkify. But we've got to be like Baron Von Spunkify or something like that. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, oh, this is like a this is Soviet Union, right? So I wouldn't be French. All right, all right, all right. Let's get back in the game here. <laughs> all right, so I'm, I'm gonna pepper this guy here, and you see, I'm just, I, I just want it to be right over him, but I'm like, I don't not having a really easy time getting right over you without making really small, minute adjustments, and often it's not in time, especially if they start moving. You really only get good hits on them when they start moving. When you get like this, as you can see, unless they're they're moving in a straight line, you often find that you're just overcompensating or just not compensating enough. All right, so let's see here. This guy's going down straight down. Uh, I got to bring myself back here for a little bit better view. I'm going to go ahead and speed up here. Kind of come from behind. And the thing about it is you can kind of almost turn on a dime. That guy just did a nice uh, barrel roll there to get behind them. My weapons are, of course, overheating now, which means I'm in trouble. i got to wait for them to completely get down. Let's see. Let's see. This guy's at 44% HP. Let's see if we can take him out, guys. I'm going to kind of come off my throttle just a bit. Make sure that I can get behind this guy if possible. All right, so let's come over here. Let's speed up. Now, when you speed up, you lose kind of some of your maneuverability. All right. Ah, uh, 41%, 40%. Let's see if we can get some more. 39%. Come on. 30. Uh, let's move around here real quick. If I could average just one kill a game, I think I'd be happy. But the, given the fact that it can be get fairly difficult really quickly here, and I think somebody's shooting at me. Or I think that's aircraft, anti-aircraft guns actually shooting at me. I think he's flying over his base is what he's doing. So there are anti-aircraft guns to shoot at you. And I think if you fly directly at them, they will end up hitting you. Ah, um, so getting some hits here. He's down to 10% HP, guys. He's getting real low. I'm getting shot, though. He's going down, maybe. Um, I gotta watch out for the anti-aircraft gun. It is shooting me. He's getting close. I'm like, I got like fire in the back or something. I don't know. Come on. Come on. I gotta take him out for the anti-aircraft guns. Come on. Oh, he's so low. Oh, now I'm down seven. Oh, I'm sitting duck now. I'm totally dead. I think there's a guy behind me as well. I just want to take you out. This guy is... Ah, oh, God. It was the anti... No, there was a plane behind me, maybe. And also the AA guns right there as well. I was flying over the headquarters. And uh, was I killing their headquarters? Maybe. I don't know. But he called me idiot. Was that me? Is fine? I don't know. Anyways, hopefully he gets taken out here soon. We're pretty much even on the team there. And, uh... Let's see, can you kill this guy? Let's look right there. So overall, yeah, the controls really float. I mean, you saw how low he was. And I, I feel like I could have really taken him out much quicker if I just didn't have his floaty controls just moving around. When people start moving around, you just get these really wide sprays. You're never really able to, like, narrow it down on them. And I, I feel like that's a huge issue. That guy's down to 8%. But all right, let's go ahead and back out of this and do one more little quick little match with my other plane here. Let's see. I'll go ahead and use my P-12. Why not here? And is there any tech tree advancements I can make for my P-12? No P-12 ad advancements. I can, however, research additional planes. So I can go with different biplanes, I believe, which is the next thing. So I've now researched that. Can I purchase this plane, though? I want to purchase this plane. Or did I upgrade? Ah, oh, did I upgrade this plane to that? Or did I change it to that? Or was it always... No, wait. I don't think I did. Anyways, let's just go ahead and jump in the game. I have researched it, and I believe that I didn't have to purchase it at that point. So you can also bring up the chat and see what people are talking about as well. I like the fact that they now have this chat in the uh, the waiting room, the lobby base system. Last time I played World of Tanks, uh, before they released 8.0 update, they did not have that feature. And I suspect a lot of what the 8.0 update incorporated with World of Tanks will be moved over to this. Now, for those of you wondering how will World of Tanks and World of Warplanes combine, or if they will combine into one game, they will not combine into one game. 
but they will be persistent, meaning that currency you earn in one game can be transferred over to the other game uh, without having to do anything. So you can just use one currency in between both games, meaning if you play a lot of World of Tanks, you have currency already waiting for you when you play World of Warplanes. And again, when World of Battleships releases next year, which is the next game in the lineup, that will also be available. So I like the fact that you're able to use all your crude currency, let's say if you've been playing World of Tanks for the last year or so, you're able to use that crude currency to unlock a bunch of stuff uh, for your World of Warplanes. Now granted, it doesn't mean you'll be good, it just means you'll have some currency to work with, you know, and to kind of get your unlock started, which I do like the fact that they have kind of shown that uh, loyalty to players who have spent so much time in World of Tanks. Now, what does get incorporated between the two games, besides the currency, is kind of like the clan-based system. So you can kind of fight for territory in both games, and both will contribute towards your clan's progression, I guess you could say. I'm not really too sure on the specifics with that, uh, but I do know for a fact they will incorporate as far as like if you have a battle with another clan and you win a match in the air You can then you know play on the ground version of the map uh, Because I do know some of these maps do incorporate areas that are in World of Tanks merely larger scale So I do like the fact that you can kind of have these uh, ongoing battles You know one team that's for World of Warplanes one team that's for World of Tanks But both teams are, are in the same clan. So this guy's coming around here in his P-23 Let's see if I can kind of come up here and, and head him off. So I'm going to kind of try to bring my reticule in front of him to kind of project when I'm going to start seeing it. And there I'm starting to see it now. So he's already coming here trying to destroy some buildings here. I'm going to see if I can come up behind him. Now one thing I'd wish is to see my overheating not just in the corner, but somewhere more in the middle of my screen as well. Because the problem with that is I don't know when I'm starting to overheat. So I, you know, I'm firing on somebody. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get the kill. But then I realize that I'm overheating. Because it's not on the screen enough. Ah, I'm missing that guy. I'm getting peppered now. I think from behind. So let's go ahead and pull over here. I can use my throttle a little bit. Or I can pull down on my throttle. and come out. Whoa, that's a lot of red cutting at me. So let's come over back over here where my teammates are. Kind of regroup a little bit before I get taken out. Alrighty here. P90. P223. You come. You're going to live for a little bit longer. I feel like calling them P23 instead of their names. That's a little weird. P23, curse you. Curse you for brilliant engineering. All right, so let's come down here. I mean, I'm always, I've always been a fan of uh, War One, War War Two, kind of you know machine gun fighters. I felt like they always were more skillful than, say, people playing. Ah, oh, I just took a lot of damage on my fuselage. Same people playing uh, the more modern, you know, using the more modern jet fighters because I felt like the whole locking on with missiles, etc., wasn't as fun as firing machine guns at people. I'm about to overheat here. Let's come around. But, uh, but I do have to say that the floaty combat is just making it very difficult to enjoy that. All right, so I can use my break here, come around the target here, and now I'm going to zoom in to get a better hit here. And now I'm going to start peppering this guy from behind. He's going to try to zoom down here, try to zoom around. I'm going to... Oh, I got a fuselage burning. Now, when you actually do catch on fire, it will do some damage to you for a while until the fus uh, fuselage gets put back out. And if you're low enough and you're on fire, then it pretty much means you're going to end up dying. Uh, because it will burn you down to death. All right, so let's come down here. I need to fly, do some extra maneuvers. I don't know where... Looks like we're not doing too well. We got one negative on our team, meaning that he crashed into someone and died. All right, so let's come around here. Let's see if I can come around real quick. The enemies are already destroying uh, our base somehow. All right, let's come around. Ah, I'm doing so poorly, guys. I'm so... I'm so embarrassed by my play. I mean, I got some hits off, but not just not getting any kills. All right, so... Let's see if we can come around. Now, you can use W and A, or A and D, rather, to kind of, you know, help do a roll, do barrel rolls across the screen. But uh, overall, I'm just having a really hard time. And I think, I know they want this to be a little bit more arcadey, a little bit more open to people, but this isn't the way you do it, because this just turns people off. The fact that they, they get frustrated because they can't stay on targets. And I don't really feel it's a skill-based thing. I feel it's just a, the controls are way too floaty. All right. Got that guy down to 66%. Ah, I'm getting close to death. Ah, if I can just survive until the end of the round. No, no, I was taken out. So I did do some damage to him, but unfortunately I ended up being taken out after he took out my left wing. Scroll down. I mean, for me, right now, the control system is just not for me. And I'm more of a keyboard and mouse guy rather than joystick. And I'm sure a lot of people are like that as well. And so I think a lot of people, I mean, who's who's to say that I wasn't taken out right then by someone with a joystick? Uh, well, there's really no, I have no idea how large the, the skill discrepancy is right now between the two types. Because I feel like it's just, 
the state of controls for the keyboard mouse are just in complete disarray. But let me know. If you guys are in the beta right now, let me know your thoughts on it, what you think is good or bad about the game. And otherwise, uh, let me know about in the comments below. Anyways, this has been Spunkify. I'll see you guys from the next episode here on MMOBomb.com. If you guys want to learn more about World of Warplanes, do check out down below at MMOBomb.com for the full game profile. Boy, we are getting crushed in this match. Look at all those guys. Anyways, this has been Spunkify. Spunkify, out.